Good morning. I was enjoying that jam on the organ. I don't know about all you. Man, well, just what we needed on this gloomy day, right? Well, welcome to worship at First Christian Church. We are excited to be together. Um, whether you are here in person or online, um, we're so glad to worship together this morning. If you are visiting today, welcome. Um, if you're here for the first time, we would love to get to know you a little bit better. There are uh, welcome cards in your pew that you can fill out and place in the offering basket on your way out. So today we are kicking off a new series called Open Tables. Together we will learn what the Bible has to say about the table and understand why the table is so central to our worship as disciples. For those of you who have children, you've probably seen this week's children's email that shared some fun and creative ways to set the table as a family. There's a weekly craft, an easy recipe, so if any of you want that, let me know, a prayer, and a book that's shared every week. This week we heard a story called Our Table by Peter H. Reynolds. It's about a girl named Violet who wants to get her family gathered around the table again. So they build a table together. And this is what it says. When they were done, Violet paused to marvel at their creation. A place to come together, to share stories once again. A table to make memories. A table stronger, more beautiful than ever. As we enter into worship this morning, let us gather around the table to share stories, make memories, and lift each other up. Welcome to worship. As we go to God in prayer this morning, we give thanks uh, to a God who holds our prayers with us, uh, those that we will share aloud this morning, those that we are still finding our words for. Uh, we're grateful. Uh, it is a gift to be in prayer together. And so we lift up a few specific prayer requests. Um, Jim Wallace's mom, June Hurt, passed away on Friday. Um, and so Jim, uh, Aaron, Amy, family, we are holding you close in our prayers uh, for comfort as you grieve, as you celebrate June's life. Uh, there will be a graveside service on Wednesday at 3.30 p.m. at the Edmonton Cemetery, which is in Metcalf County. Uh, Lord, hear our prayers. Uh, Lisa Kearney's daughter, Olive, has COVID. Uh, so far, her symptoms are mild, and so we will pray with Olive uh, for a swift recovery. Uh, Lord, hear our prayer. Uh, Robert Lewis, brother of Carol Watwood, is undergoing cancer treatment, so we pray for Robert's strength and resilience in his recovery. Uh, Lord, hear our prayer. 
Uh, Andrea Morgan's father, Neil Morgan, is having surgery on Wednesday to remove a cancerous tumor from his left lung. Uh, it is stage 1B, so doctors are hopeful there will be no need for additional treatment beyond this surgery. And so we pray that that is the case. Uh, we pray with Neil, his wife Ruth, and for Andrea as they navigate this time together. Uh, Lord, hear our prayer. John Faircloth is back home after a fall last Monday where he broke his shoulder. Uh, so we pray with John for his strength and for a good, full recovery. Lord, hear our prayer. D Denise Lambrianu's cousin, uh, Treva Kraft, uh, has COVID for the third time now. Uh, and so we pray with Treva in her recovery, um, her resilience. Uh, Lord, hear our prayer. Uh, let us continue in the spirit of prayer together. Will you please join with me in prayer? Dear and gracious Lord, a new year is often a time of excitement and anticipation, but this new year seems different somehow. As we begin 2022, many of us still feel overwhelmed and exhausted by the remnants of the previous year. Our optimism has been wounded by an ongoing global pandemic, drought and wildfires in the West, and the wreckage and trauma of local tornadoes. We feel tired, fearful, and lost. The one bright spot amidst the darkness was the miracle of people joining together in the aftermath of the tornado. Amidst the devastation, neighbor helped neighbor, and assistance poured in from around the world. It was a beautiful thing to see how people could come together for the greater good and a sign of the way forward for all of us. Lord, please bring all of us together as a community bonded by faith, hope, and love. Give us the courage to reach out and help our neighbors, and the strength to overcome the challenges in our path. Help us to remember that disaster and misfortune are temporary, but your love for us is everlasting. Precious Father, your children ask for a new year of hope and healing, of renewal and rebuilding. All things are possible through you. Lord, we lift up those who need your healing hand, either in body or spirit, both those who were named and those who we name silently in our hearts. We ask these things in Jesus' name, who taught all of us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, our children are invited to children worship and wonder. Come all ye people, come and praise your maker. Come all ye people, come and praise your maker. Come all ye people, come and praise your maker. Come now and worship the Lord.
Thank you, Ben. Um, I got to catch up with Ben for a moment this morning, and I hope you don't mind me sharing. Cause, um, but Ben, whose home he was renting with several roommates, was destroyed in the tornado, but they are settled in a new apartment, and so we give thanks for that and pray for that transition. Um, this morning, uh, I'm particularly feeling the prayer um, that Matt lifted up um, and aware that on this gloomy day, there are many burdens we carry, um, those that have been named aloud and those that we carry in our hearts. Um, just a prayer for Matt's father, who is back in the hospital, um, or maybe in rehab now, back in, in rehab now, but then he shared that his mom got in a car accident and just the heavy burden of caring for family who lives far away, and we carry that with you. Um, also, I want to lift up that Daniel's grandmother passed away last week. Um, he got to go back home to Bardstown and celebrate her life on Thursday, um, but we pray with you, Daniel, um, and with your family as you grieve. Um, as we start this new series, uh, during the season of Epiphany, um, though we carry some heavy burdens, I trust that if there is any place that we can turn to um, when things feel heavy, it is the table. Um, you can see that Kyle has our table set up more like it might look like at your house um, for supper at night. And that is on purpose because we're going to turn our hearts to the table in this season. And I trust that God will show up here among us. So now let us um, look for good news in the book of Acts, chapter 20, verses 7 through 12. On the first day of the week, when we met to break bread, Paul was holding a discussion with them. Since he intended to leave the next day, he continued speaking until midnight. There were many lamps in the room upstairs where we were meeting. A young man named Eutychus, who was sitting in the window, began to sink off into a deep sleep while Paul still talked longer. Overcome by sleep, he fell to the ground three floors below and was picked up dead. But Paul went down and bending over him, took him in his arms and said, do not be alarmed for his life is in him. Then Paul went upstairs and after he had broken bread and eaten, continued to converse with them until dawn. Then he left. Meanwhile, they had taken the boy away alive and were not a little comforted. This is the word of God, and in it we can trust. An interesting story, right? Not so long ago, Willie and I invited a few friends over for dinner. We cleaned the house and prepared some food and set out the drinks before people started to arrive. We had a record playing and um, the lights dimmed a little bit and we were looking forward to our evening together. We were just about to start dinner when the big event happened. The girls were playing a dice game with some of our friends when I went to pick up a roll of paper towels at the center of our kitchen table. Only when I picked up the paper towels, to my surprise, they were on fire. Someone, I won't name any names, set the paper towels you see on top of a tea light candle in the center of the table. So what did I do? So calm under pressure. I stood frozen in place, holding the flaming paper towels in my hands, yelling, fire, fire, the paper towels are on fire. While the table full of guests looked back at me and sort of tilted their heads like, hmm, that's strange. And finally, someone had the good sense 
to say, maybe you should bring those to the sink, which was only a couple of steps away. So then I looked at Willie, frozen in my own fear, and he quickly stepped in, took the flaming paper towels, and put them under the faucet. The whole thing happened in probably less than 30 seconds, but immediately upon discovering that we did not burn the house down, we all burst into laughter. So we probably won't remember what we served for dinner that night, or even our topics of conversation around the table a year from now, but I guarantee the story of the night we set the paper towels on fire at dinner will live on forever. So I sort of wonder if the story about Eutychus is a little bit like that. This little known story in Acts is set around a different table of sorts. Paul is gathering for supper with the disciples and he must have had more than a few stories to tell because we are told that they are up until midnight, up until dawn, listening to these stories. Only one person finally breaks down and dozes off. Poor Eutychus. Kind of like that roll of paper towels, it was like he was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. But I'm thinking like, don't you know, Eutychus, if you're feeling drowsy and a well-known, long-winded preacher comes to town, you probably shouldn't sit in an open window three stories up. Adding to the irony of our story for today is that Eutychus's name, it literally is translated as the word lucky. So do you think that just maybe this story was intended to make us laugh? Our sermon series for Epiphany Open Tables is based on a book that Daniel recommended to me. The book is titled Table Talk by a disciple named Mike Graves. And in the second chapter, he says everything you need to know about the early church and their upper room practices is tucked away in the 20th chapter of Acts. He'll later admit that maybe not everything is in there, but that this story is particularly insightful on early Christian meals. The story begins with the words, on the first day of the week. And if you know much about the books of Luke, and Acts thought to both be written by Luke, these words should catch your attention on the first day of the week. They are a little signal that resurrection is coming. The same words are spoken in the final chapter of Luke where Jesus is resurrected. So we should start the story with hope. It may be a weird story, and we might be quite concerned for poor Eutychus for a while. But at its core, the story from Acts, like the table, it is a story about new life. Also in the story, note that the meal, the meal is the main reason for gathering. One of the main theses of Graves' book is that meals were not just a part of Christian worship, but that the table, meaning not just a little wafer and a little juice, but a full meal was at the heart of worship. Church was eating together. It wasn't worship and then go to the fellowship hall for a potluck. The potluck was worship. Maybe that's why a disciple in Madisonville, Kentucky, started the Potluck Church just a few years ago. Also, we learn from Lucky Eutychus that these meals lasted a long time. At first century meal gatherings, there was typically first the meal served, and then a second part to the evening, which was called the symposium, 
which usually consisted of a long conversation over wine. Typically, these meal gatherings and all lasted two and a half to four hours. So listen, y'all, I don't want to hear any complaints when I preach a little bit over 10 minutes every once in a while, okay? But sarcasm aside, I wanted to read this story with you all this morning as the first uh, scripture to our series because I thought it might catch our attention. I wanted us to start with a sort of shocking narrative that reminds us that what happens at the table, it can't necessarily always be captured by that tiny little bread and the tiny little cup, which isn't to discount those as symbols, but to recognize that every single week when we gather around the table, that something bigger than just that symbol is happening. Our Open Tables series coincides with the season of epiphany, a word that means showing forth. And a season that acknowledges and even seeks the moments that Jesus shows up in both big and small ways in our lives and in our world. Usually, Epiphany is kicked off after the story of the three wise men, bringing gifts that will show forth to the world that this baby Jesus isn't just any child, but that he will change everything. But what if we look for that showing forth of light and love, not through three men named Wise, but through one man named Lucky? And consider that resurrection comes through strange circumstances and often at completely unexpected times. What if we gathered around the table instead of the stable and looked for the showing forth of Jesus in the faces that are gathered round? And what if even as disciples, we disciples have a little pride about our table, don't we? What if even as disciples who take communion every single week, what if even we have a thing or two to learn about this table that we hold so dear? Could Jesus surprise us still? When the finance committee gathered for our last meeting, last year, to dot our I's and cross our T's on this year's budget, I said to them, my dream for us is to spend all of our money on food next year. And this is a bit of an exaggeration, but I explained to them that I hoped we would invest in our hospitality ministry Because after so many years of being apart, the only way I know for us to come back together is to gather around the table. So we planned these brunches for 12, which Kyle will tell you a little bit more about later, and then came Omicron. So we know that probably Fewer people will sign up, and everybody has their own comfort levels, and that is totally okay. I trust that that will be okay. Because we are hoping towards later in the year, it'll warm up, we'll get to have some fellowship meals outdoors, and just maybe this virus will slow down, and we'll get to eat in large groups inside together again. Because you see, the meal... It isn't separate from worship. It is worship. And whether we are gathered around a beautiful homemade communion table or a kitchen table 
I don't know what your tables look like at home for those of you worshiping online with us today. Or whether we're gathered around one of those plastic tables, round tables in our parking lot. We can trust that new life happens there. We can return to those tables when we are unsure or afraid or even stuck in grief. We can go to those tables when we have a good story to share or a reason to celebrate. So let us open our hearts to this season of Jesus showing forth. And let us set our tables faithfully, open to a God that sometimes surprises us. Amen. lives again, earth can breathe again, pass the word around, loves abound. Christ is able to make us one, at the table he sets the tone, teaching people to live, to bless, love and word and indeed express. Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again, pass the word around, loves abound. Most meals tend to be pretty unremarkable, right? Maybe a little mundane or even forgettable. I know there's a few that I still think about, like the shawarma I had at this little street stand in the West Bank. Think about that about once a week. Or prime rib and twice-baked potato the night before Thanksgiving. Pretty much think about that year-round. But if you ask me what I had for dinner last Tuesday, I couldn't tell you. Or how often have I packaged up leftovers, put it in the fridge, forgotten about it, and then had to throw it away? Some meals are memorable, and most are just part of living and surviving. What I tend to remember most about meals is less about the food and more about who I shared it with, why why we were eating together in the first place, and the experiences that we shared around those tables. Of all things, Jesus could have asked us to remember Jesus chose a meal, ordinary, unremarkable, and yet so central to how we understand our faith and how we live and relate to each other in this world. Meals might be ordinary, yet our sharing of them with intention, God somehow finds a way to make them so holy. In the breaking of bread and pouring of wine and the taste and the smells and the sounds of being together, we come to know life, we are called into community, we are rooted in resurrection, we experience love that knows no boundaries. So let us gather at Christ's table for a meal that grounds us in those truths, that call us together, that invites us to witness the ways God makes the forgettable unforgettable and the mundane so holy. It was during a meal, and Jesus was gathered around a table with his disciples. And he took a loaf of bread, and he blessed it, and he broke it. He said, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after the supper, Jesus took the cup, and he blessed it, and he poured it out, and he said, this is the cup of the new covenant. Each time you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. This is the bread of life, the cup of God's love for you. All are welcome. 
at Christ's table. Let us pray. God of love, we give you thanks for this bread of life, for this cup of your love for us, for a table to which all are welcome. God, we are amazed at the ways that you show up whenever we gather together and the ways that you make ordinary moments so incredibly holy. May we show up at your table this morning with openness, openness to your life-giving love and life-changing grace that we find here. And may we share that love and grace with your world. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As Megan mentioned in her sermon, we will be starting something called uh, Brunch for 12. So if you like brunch and you are interested in getting to know some of the new folks in the church, um, or if you are a new folk in, folk in the church, um, starting next Sunday, January 16th, you can sign up to stay after worship for a catered uh, brunch from Bike Rack Bistro. And this will be groups of 12 only. So we just ask you to sign up for one week for now. Um, we're going to cap that at 12 just to stay safe. Um, and you can RSVP. There's a link that was provided in the e-news. Um, and maybe we can get that up in the comments online. Um, and then there's also a sign-up sheet on the mission board in the hallway where you can pick your date and sign up there as well. Um, this is just a great opportunity for us to hang out, get to know one, each one another again, um, get to maybe see some faces without masks on, um, and just spend time together. Uh, we also have another opportunity coming up at the end of the month, but we're going to save that little tidbit for next week, so um, look forward to that. Uh, <laughs> Because of your gifts to the general fund, we are able to have ministries like this one um, happen in our church, and we are able to get to know each other and to gather around the table. So thank you so much for your gifts, um, for your continued gifts. If you're here with us in worship this morning, you can put your, um, your gift in the basket as you leave, or if you're online, there will be a link in the comments that you can click on, or you can drop off those checks in the lockbox outside anytime this week. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the gifts that you have given us, and we give them back to you so that you can transform them for your kingdom. Remind us, God, how to do your work and how to gather together in love and peace and hope. It's in your son's name that we pray. Amen. Before we go, I have a couple of uh, mission opportunities and announcements to share. 
Um, many of you have seen online that um, we have signed up to deliver some meals to those who were displaced by the tornado. Um, it's, it, I think it is tw today only, um, but we were reached out to by someone at Hillview um, Church and different churches have taken different days. All you have to do is deliver the meal, not prepare the meal itself. And we have about three slots left. We're doing it with Christ Episcopal today. And so um, the sign up online, you can sign up through the Sign Up Genius online. And for some reason, it's saying that it's Eastern Central, Central Time, but it's actually Central Time. Um, and so at 11.15 and 12, we need people to deliver lunches. Um, you go over to the Creekwood apartment complex where you'll pick up the food from a food truck and then deliver to the route that they'll give you there. And then also at five o'clock, we need two volunteers. I think we needed like three more people when I looked at it early this morning. Um, the five o'clock uh, meal is gonna be coming out of Soki. Um, so there's a commercial kitchen over by we, where we worshiped at Easter, our outdoor worship venue. There's a commercial kitchen there and that old church there. Um, and you'll take meals. And I believe those might be going to refugees, actually, the five o'clock meal. So um, if you have time and want to do that, um, we encourage you to sign up. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask Kyle or myself. Um, also, this Tuesday is going to mark one month since the tornadoes hit Bowling Green. It feels more like a year. <laughs> um, but this Tuesday is going to be uh, one month, and Christ Episcopal is going to be hosting a service of lament and remembrance at 6 p.m., and the ministers from all the downtown churches, I believe, um, we're going to be participating, will be co-leading that service, and we invite you to attend. And then on Saturday, January the 15th at 7 o'clock, um, FCC is hosting a tornado relief benefit concert um, here in the sanctuary. Carlos and Juliana Martinez have organized the performances, which will feature Zach Bush, um, Carlos and Juliana themselves, Dwight Pounds, and the Red River Fiddlers. And so I know that'll be a beautiful concert. Um, the concert is free, um, but donations will be accepted to benefit um, First Christians Tornado Relief Fund. And if I could say a word about that before we close, um, we wanna keep you up to date with how we're using that money um, and where it's being spent. Um, we bought furniture for the housing authority um, for several families that were displaced and moved into housing authority apartments. We also brought, uh, bought a, a new mattress for a family connected with our church um, that was sort of having to um, repurchase everything for their home. And I didn't write it down and it's escaping me. Uh, the latest thing that we did, but we've been able to use that fun those funds and we plan on being able to fill in the gaps for some of the short term needs, but also um, we'll be looking to the future and the long term rebuilding efforts. And so we are just so grateful. And I know that it's not only you guys that donated to that fund. If you're like me, you have people from all across the country contacting you and asking where to give. And so y'all directed a lot of those folks to our church and we'll try to keep telling you how we're spending that money so that you can send those messages messages back to those who um, were so gracious to reach out and help when we were in need. So those are the announcements we have for today. So I would invite you to rise for our benediction. <clears throat> Go in peace, rooted in the hope that the table provides. Go in peace, grounded by a God who welcomes us over and over again. Go in peace, assured that we worship a God who surprises us. Go in peace, church. Amen.